All right, welcome to the Scotty Rourke Show. How's everybody? I hope you had a great Memorial Day. Once again, I, I want to make sure we honor and bless all the people that came before us to make us free and for their service here to us and so that we could be here tonight doing the show. Thank you for that. We'll do a moment of silence for all of them right now. Thank you. All right, welcome to the Scotty Rourke Show. This is so cool. I'm very happy to have my guest on tonight with me, um, a gentleman that this is very foreign to us. <laughs> this gentleman used to be on, it used to be a co-host or a, a sub-co-host for us on The Buzz. So you remember we had Bob Stakner on here a few weeks ago, and uh, now we have Mr. William Beck. William, welcome. Scotty, thank you. It's really great to be on the program, and uh, this brings back a lot of fun memories. So I'm looking forward to tonight very much. Yeah, especially because we never saw each other when we're on here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we always had a little more hair back then too. So, well, I had a lot less. I have it all ponytailed now. See, yeah, it looks good. I know it looks great. So I got a lot, 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 lot more hair. So this is COVID hair, and I haven't had a cut since November of '19. So. And I'm not going to. I'm going to see how long I can go now without yeah. cutting my hair. Looks good. So, everybody, I, I know the update is the, the Ectomobile had to go into the doctors, and the Ectomobile is fine. So, I want to make sure everybody knows Ecto-22 is doing well. She's back out of the, the doctors. She had her Ecto cooler fixed, and um, now we got some cold air, so I can actually drive <laughs> and go places in air conditioning. So, I'm very happy to have the Ecto back, and um, she's ready for the summer. So I'm very excited. She was great in the heat, but now it's cold, not so hot. It's supposed to be, it's going to be the hottest weekend of the year here in oh. Wisconsin. It's going to be up to nine, um, 90. And for us, that's hot. See wow, how it is hot up there. Yeah. And I'll by you guys, it's, it, it, what, you, you're in North Carolina, right? Right. And uh, I think this weekend it's supposed to be in the low 80s or something. So. Yeah. See, you, got, you always got that ocean helping you and the mountains on the other side. Yeah. So we're, we like it. It's a little change from Nashville, Tennessee, but uh, right. we're we're happy to be here and closer to family. So, yeah. So, so uh, on the buzz here, I even made that fun opening with the guy drawing and stuff. I created that myself. I can't believe it. Well, <laughs> I did all the radio stuff before. Now I'm doing video. I'm like video. <laughs> I can, wow, this is different. You'll be making big movies pretty soon. So, <laughs> well, I hope so. Anybody watching that that's a producer, please call me at <laughs> Scott York and on Facebook. Just hit me up. Happy to do it. it. And we'll make a Bryson McGann movie. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. We'll have to talk about that tonight. Yeah. But let's get going. I, I always get jabbering into this, and we never really get into introductions first. So I'll go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, I'm William Beck. I'm the author of the Bryson McGann adventure thriller series. And uh, also the spinoff series featuring uh, Jess Colton, a female archaeologist. And uh, in the Bryce and McGann series, we have a new novel out called Polar Meltdown. It's an adventure thriller that uh, involves the DIA, the Navy, Russian submarine, a cabal of uh, important business people, and Bryce and McGann and a Canadian cruise ship. Wow. And they all come to loggerheads in the, the Arctic. So it's a, it's an interesting story. Um, a lot of fun characters. And one of my most fun characters that I've ever written in the book is Scotty Rorick. So I wonder who that is. <laughs> and I did get his permission a while back to use his name. So well, I kind of forced him. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Actually, uh, your part, Scotty, started out, um, it was going to be a smaller part, and then it just kind of involved because this uh, business that he owns is a mercenaries for hire company protection service and uh, was sort of alluded to in other books. And in this book, he is sort of the ringleader of this whole group. And uh, your character, I just absolutely love. Um He's nice. somebody you just hate to love. <laughs> he's a shrewd guy. He's uh, he's pretty devious. He's funny as hell. <laughs> and uh, I think you'll like him once you read the book. So I can't wait. I can't wait for it. Yeah, no. So we were doing the buzz one night. And I remember sitting here and, and William was our, our guest host 
because I think um, I think there, everybody else was gone. Even Terry, nobody could jump in, but William jumped in and co-hosted the show with me. And I'm sitting there. We're talking about his books because I read I read his first book in in like one setting. And I everybody knows who watches the show knows I don't read. I, I mean, if I read, it's in the bathroom, and that's about it. I mean, I'm a Cliff Notes type of dude, you know. That, so for me to read a whole book in one setting was like I was shocked. <laughs> But I love his Bryson McGain books. I mean, they're awesome. And um, yeah. always have. I always have since we, we started this. And um, and I have them here in the house. I got to get this one now. And, of course, I want you to autograph it, especially since I'm in it. Oh, absolutely. Because I'm going to take it to the shows with me. And then we'll talk about how I can get people to order it through you then. Oh, okay. Well, that would be great. Yeah, well, we're, uh, tonight is sort of the official release of the Kindle version. Oh, and, cool. Um, the, the paperbacks and hardbacks will be released in a few more weeks, and I'll update you on that when that happens. But um, we're, we're also doing something special with the Kindle version uh, for people who buy that. Um, part of their uh, book sale will go to Canines for Warriors. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great program for our veterans who have suffered from PTSD, um, traumatic brain injuries or sexual assault, and they provide service dogs for healing for these folks. And um, once I found out about this, I just said, I've, I've got to donate some money for my book sale. So everybody that's listening, go out and get a Kindle uh, Polar Meltdown and uh, do, do some uh, good work there for these people. Yeah, Barbara, why don't you get it? Because Barbara's healing right now, so we keep sending out healing to Barbara every week. Um, Barbara, why don't you go to the Kindle version? You can sit in your, your room and, and read it and let us know how it is. So I'm so excited. I can't oh, wait. Oh, thanks. I, I, uh, not even because I'm in it, because the book that I <laughs> Well, yeah, I always enjoy writing the books because when I write them, it's like I'm watching a movie play out. But um, And there's always certain characters that that I, I love in each book and, and like the different books for different reasons. But uh, this one I'm, I'm really excited about. And also uh, the, my wife is in it um, oh, cool. along with a couple surgeons that she had uh, worked with uh, at Vanderbilt University Hospital. And um, so they're, they're in it and uh, makes for a fun read how that all blends, blends together, so. Yeah, I remember, I remember just begging and begging, you know, I think you need a good character. I think you need a great character. You can use my name. Go for it. <laughs> and it could be devious. It could be bad. I don't care. Uh, no, I think you'll like Scotty Rorick in the book. So I can't wait to I can't wait to meet him. But what's kind of funny is because um, one of the ladies that was on our show way back when, uh, Marley Gibson and um, and Patrick Burns, Marley wrote a, a series of ghost hunting books called Ghost Huntress. And um, so it's the girl version of like Harry Potter, or mm -hmm. Potter with ghosts and stuff. And I'm the evil history teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there seems to be a little theme going on here with this. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta show my other side because everybody thinks I'm so nice. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna see the true Scotty Rock. <laughs> well, one of the things too that's in each book, um, since I've been an old rocker fan, um, there's uh, band members in each book who play characters. So it's always fun if you like rock and roll to kind of go through the pages and find those people. So uh, I think one of the characters in this one is John Kay from Steppenwolf and right. a couple other folks. So oh, that's really cool. So um, so let's start way back in your way back machine. So when okay. you were young, did you want to be a writer? What did you want to do? Well, rock and roll? You know, you know, it's interesting. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, I remember in 1966, I'm a kid living in Northeast Ohio, um, close to Lake Erie. And I'm out in the backyard with my little transistor radio with the earbud in. And uh, it was the first day of the release of the Beatles song, Paperback Writer. And I heard that song and I instantly fell in love with it. And I just kind of thought to myself, what a, what a great way to make a living being a paperback writer, you know, and never really thought much about it till 20 some years later and started giving writing some thought. And um, so here we are. But uh, that, that's kind of how that concept formed. Um, 
That's cool. So, I mean, did you go to school for it or what did you go to school for? Well, I, um, after I left the Army, I went to nursing school and became a registered nurse. Um, but also during that time, I um, took courses on creative writing and actually wanted to do children's literature when, uh, when I first had the bug to write. And my kids were younger at that time, and I had some inspiration. And as they got older and started turning into characters from a horror movie, I said, well, there goes the children's lit idea. So, <laughs> no, actually, they're both great kids. But uh, I just found that, you know, I was kind of evolving with the writing themes. And, um, and my brother gave me the topic for the first book about the government's heart project and from then on, things took off into adult fiction. And I got to give a shout out to him because he always finds unique things uh, and sends them to me. And they oftentimes end up being storylines and books. So, oh, wow. yeah. I'm, it's I'm cool really that you can that. live that too, you know, work yeah. together. It's kind of neat. Yeah, absolutely. So how big is your family? Um, my brother lives here in uh, Hendersonville. In North Carolina, and my sister's in Weaverville, just north of Asheville. So, okay. yeah, and of course, our our kids, our son's in Washington D.C. and works at the Pat Examiner, and our our uh, daughter and her husband are moving from New Hampshire to back to Florida, where she grew up, um, through his job. And I can't really say what that is because then I'd have to kill you. So. <laughs> <laughs> No, I could. He works for Homeland Security, but I can't say anything else about that. Right. So. None wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need the show censor more than right. more than it normally gets every week. So. Or have somebody yeah. knocking on my door in an hour or two. So <laughs> it won't be that long, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Your books already get you in that realm. So That's hey, right. we're all good. So woo. well, you know, this is interesting. Um, we have a very good friend. Um, He's retired now from the FBI, but um, he was very interested in my first novel and uh, wanted the manuscript. And I always wondered, you know, are you interested in it because I wrote the book or are you looking for something because I'm talking about this government's art project <laughs> in Alaska? And uh, I've always wondered about that ever since. Then. <laughs> so next time I see Steve, I'm going to have to ask him. And <laughs> I know I have a I have a friend who's on TV. Um, his name is Ben Hansen, and he um, he does a lot of the shows with. But his dad used to be part of the Men in Black, oh, okay. and so his dad couldn't tell him much throughout his whole life. And his dad's passed now, and he always wants to know what his dad really has to say. And it's just like, I mean, because he remembers like giving hints to him, like um, they would see aliens on TV, and his dad would go, "That's not how they look," and he walked away. And that's all he would say. <laughs> Interesting. You know, so, yeah. you know, you go your whole life and your dad's in it and he can't give you anything because that's the way he is. So that's kind of, I understand that. I understand what people yeah. want to look at our stuff and, and do so. Oh, by the way, Beth says, hi, dad. Who did? Right oh, there. Beth. <laughs> hey, Beth. How are you? She's a lovely gal that uh, we worked with here in North Carolina. Cool. Yeah, nice that she tuned in. I appreciate that. Yeah, but I saw, so, you know, like in, in your first book, I mean, was that your first book or how did this, I mean, where the book started? And because Bryson came, Bryson came when we met, and that's what, already eight eight years ago, nine years ago, something like that? It's not been a while. Yeah, yeah it has been a while. Yeah, um, again, uh, came to life. My father's middle name was Bryson. And uh, so that took on the character's first name. And um, his middle name is Donald, which was my dad's first name and my brother's first name. Hey, Connie. Nice to see you. Um, and so Bryson came to life in Harp's Fury. And right. um, from there, we went to Red Seven, which is sort of a jigo political thriller. And... Uh, based on a group in Washington, D.C. called the Carlton Group, and I fictionalized them. Um, they had their fingers in a lot of different things all over the world, and uh, I found them to be very intriguing. And so I uh, thought, well, let's do something with them. 
And uh, so we did. And then uh, after Natalie Holloway uh, was abducted, um, I, I started researching human trafficking. And uh, that's how Caribbean Agenda came to life. Right. And um, that was a great one, too. I like you. that one. Uh, yeah. And then uh, the fourth book, um, Cross Currents, was an Algerian terrorist. Um, and there's an interesting story behind this guy's name. His name is Ali Azir Boujamed. And his last came, last name came to life uh, because when our son was little and we'd have lasagna, he'd always call it Boujamed. <laughs> so I thought, what a great last name for some Algerian terrorist. So there's, there's the inside scoop on that. And uh, so that was a fun book to write too. And um, and then here we are. And then, so I also created a, uh, a spinoff series. I wanted to do something with a female character. And um, so the Judas coin features Jess Colton and she's a, a young female archaeologist who's having some life issues. And she ends up uh, getting a consultant job at Nessa, where Bryson McGann works in Seattle, Washington. And she gets a call late at night from a stranger and he tells her that she has been the guardian and she will receive a package in a couple days and he will arrive too and explain everything. And so from there, the story takes off and goes to the Middle East as she searches for the coins that belong to Judas uh, before this uh, Aramaic curse written a couple hundred years before Christ uh, comes to life. So, And I'm working on her second book at the moment. Nice called the Odessa image. And I'm also involved in uh, doing some short stories. The first one was Solemn Vow, and it's um, a prequel to the Bryson McGann series. And the next one, um, Uncommon Valor, is a, another short story that follows that first one. So I've got a few things on the plate that I gotta, <laughs> gotta work on. Yeah, you're retired now, so what the heck? That's right, yeah. And enjoying a, every minute of it. That's a change. <laughs> yeah. Somebody asked me the other day, aren't you bored? I said, I have not been bored one day since I quit working. <laughs> you know, and I have, you know, people say that too. Don't you miss going to the corporate America? Hell no. No, <laughs> no way in the hell. No, no. Love this. I love helping people. I love doing the, the shows. I love doing, you know, the spiritual affairs and paranormal stuff. I love my Ectomobile, you know, I just, I love it. So it's fun. But, you know, there there I came out totally. There's no way I can hide anymore that now that I ghost hunt because today I went to Burger King to get stuff for my son and I before dinner, before the show here. And um, all of a sudden the manager comes running out with all the employees and they're all taking pictures. So <laughs> it happens like it happens like that everywhere. A star the cool, is born. The coolest thing, yeah, the car is. I mean, it's amazing. I'll tell a little story here. See, at first I thought this was, you know, this has always been one of my, I think I was even talking about you way back then. I've always wanted this car. I've always wanted my own Ectomobile, and it's been on my bucket list for my whole life. And now I have the time, and I had a little bit of the money, so I did it. I finally got that off my bucket list, you know. But at first I said, you know, this is all for me. And then I didn't, then I realized it's not even for me at all. It's for everybody else. I can't, I can't tell you race, gender, Whatever they are, they love it. You know, everybody loves Ghostbusters. Absolutely. Everybody does. And, and it's a way for us to talk to them about ghosts in a way that they're going to talk because it's a Ghostbuster mobile. So they go, so why did you build a car? Because I'm a Ghostbuster. This is what I do for a living. I do ghosts. I do, I'm a psychic medium. I talk to ghosts. I go to people's houses. I'm a Ghostbuster. So my first day with it, um, my friend Andrea and her husband Kelly helped me make this car. And my first day, I had to go to a meeting where I'm where I'm writing a book, but I'm channeling it. So mm. this comes from this comes from a, his name is Sean Sean Bacon. He um, died just about a little over a year ago on Valentine's Day, and and he um, he he fell through the ice and he died. And and my and our psychic group that, that I'm in, we helped find him. We knew where he oh was. God. Helped him tell his mom, and now I'm channeling the book for him on everything that led up to it and everything he's been doing since. So it's been kind of fun to um, put this together with this person. Anyway, so 
we meet at a restaurant every Monday morning, and I do three hours of channeling every Monday, so we can you know write this book. And uh, so first thing in the morning, I drive the car in for the first time. The owner of the restaurant comes out. He wants to see it because I've been talking about it so much. And so he came out and saw it. So then we sit down, we order, we get our food, and all of a sudden this police car whips in. <laughs> I went, what the hell? <laughs> and then you hear. And then, I, then what's funny? Then my friend Kristen, his mom goes, "Hey, he's coming in." I went, "What?" He goes, "Okay, who has that ectomobile outside?" I went, "Oh my god!" And he goes, "He goes, he goes, can I come there?" I said, "Yes," because it was still during pandemic. We had to wear masks. And he said, "Yes." And I said, "Okay, come over." He goes, "I just want you to know that's the greatest car in the world." <laughs> He said, he goes, you know, he goes, the coolest thing about it is is I took pictures of it and I put it on Facebook. I said, okay, so what's your Facebook page so I can go to it? Because I didn't put it on mine. He put it on the police department's website. <laughs> and he has on there, do you hear noises in your basement or attic? Do you think you're facing dread or sorrow? Uh, contact the professionals and they put the picture on there. So oh, that's, that's great. Cool. It's still on there. So now if any cops ever come up to me, I'm going to go, my own police department likes it. <laughs> <laughs> you got the stamp of approval. Yeah, but I mean, it's talking about, I mean, how much people like the work, you know, how much people, how much, even though it comes from us and, and our ideas, it's more and more like that. And I mean, that's why I loved your books. And that's why, that's why we got to be friends is because of the book and because it was so intriguing. It, it, but that's what it does. It, it brings out the best in people. I had a 10 person road crew that was, cementing a road, you know, fixing it, all stopped and started dancing and yelling, you know, there's you know, something strange in the neighborhood. <laughs> and, then, and they all go, ah, who are you going to call? And they all pointed over to the oh, car. Oh, that's fantastic. I wish I had my camera rolling because that was like that'd oh, be a, yeah. that'd be one of those movie moments. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, yeah, the – well, you know, we, we've, uh, I think we've talked about this before. I've had some interesting experiences with the, the ghost yeah, thing. And that's and, what we want to talk about. That's kind of why I'm trying to transition. Yeah. <laughs> but did you see that, by the way? That was for you. Did you see, Georgia? I did, yes. Hi. Welcome to the show. Um, but when we're, when we're talking about this, but that's, that's the thing I'm saying, is we, we at times think we're doing this for ourselves. And we think that this is going to be there. Now it's way bigger than me. It doesn't. It doesn't matter to me anymore. I mean, I love it. I'm always going to love it, and, and I treat it like a person. And I say, you know, I say, I always say it has to go to the doctor when it's going. To the garage. <laughs> you know, it has to go out to eat when we go to gas stations. That's right. So I, I made this persona for it. It even has its own Facebook page. Oh really? I, I'll I have, have to, to have to get time. on there and hit the like button. So yeah, everybody else too. That's but, right. But. But now it's become this this thing that that when it drives by, people are got their cameras up. People are doing this. It's making people happy, and and I guess that's the reason why. Plus, it's a way for us to get the ghost normalized in the world too. Right, because they're certainly there. <laughs> Without yeah. doubt. But but you're right. I mean that you know that's that's an important thing in life. You know to to do positive things and and bring positivity into the world. Absolutely important. There's not enough of it. So, applause yes, I, to you. I, recommend, I applaud you for what you're doing with the Kindle book. That oh, is amazing well, to help people, because because this is what it's really about is us helping. Because this is the only way, everybody, that this world is going to change is by doing stuff like this, by helping others, by by giving them the, a better life, showing them a better way. You know, being there for them when they're depressed. You know, that type of stuff is what. COVID did for all of us, or should have, but ev not everybody's there yet. I mean, it's showing us that we have to be one. We can't be separated like this country is. We have to come together as one, as as a people, as a race, as a society. Um, there is no race. There's no. There's only oneness. It's us, and that's the thing that I found during the pandemic was that was the most important thing. Money wasn't. Jobs wasn't. Everything wasn't. Ecto came out of nowhere, and that and that's important because it's making people happy. But that's what it is, because you know the more people I helped during there, you know, spirit also came out to people because they were sitting on their couches. Not, you know, normally they wouldn't be on their couch; they'd be too busy. Now right. they're sitting on their couch. All of a sudden, spirit's going, 
hello, anybody in there? <laughs> you know, and, exactly. and, and then everybody contacts me and goes, how come I'm hearing my dad? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Grandma was here last night. I go, yeah. Yeah. He always were. You just were too busy. Yep. They're around all the time. Absolutely. But I mean, that's what you're doing too with the book. I mean, that's what this, this world needs and that's what it's about. You know, William and I talked before the show, both of us are very similar, but we don't, you know, we don't come out with, with the topics because it's really about the oneness. It's really about us being together and helping each other. That's what it's about. It's not being this political thing, like this, that, nothing. Just be one. If somebody needs help, help them. So true. Absolutely. You know, and if you can make them happy, help, you know, have them be happy. And I mean, when you read his books, you'll be happy. <laughs> and I'll be happy because somebody bought a book. <laughs> no, I mean, but I mean, seriously, I mean, no. you know me, you know me very well. You know, I do not read. I just don't. And for me to still read every one of your books, I've read in one session. That's awesome. What a great testament. Thank you. you no, know, and it's amazing. It's and because I'm I'm depriving myself because I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I I'm going to tell you right here, live on on Facebook and YouTube. I do not read. So for me to say I read William Beck's book, that's pretty big because I don't read. Well, I didn't even read Stephen King or nobody. <laughs> the only other one I'm going to say I read is Shakespeare, but that's about it. Well, I, I'm in good company then. So you're great. <laughs> well, you know, I, I enjoy you it so much. Great. And and I enjoy it getting the feedback like that when, when people – really enjoy reading what I've written um, because it is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, it, it's always nice to get that little pat on the back for something that you've done and, and make a difference in somebody's life. Correct. I mean, and that's why I made that long point. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to do that, but, but that's what it is. I mean, because I like, I like that type of adventure. I like James Bond. I like, I like all those type of, you know, movies like that. I mean, and now even with, when you look at them, all the stuff that's happening with, with global warming and all this stuff right down the line, you know, I mean, his books hit right in that same realm, you know, you know, it's just, it's incredible. And it's just, it's poignant. It's fun. And, and you need to check it out. I want to make sure everybody checks out his books because they are amazing. Yeah, so they can go to uh, my website at www.booksbybeck.com and um, you'll find a synopsis for each book, uh, links to purchase books, radio interviews, um, blogs, all kinds of good stuff on the website. And um, we just recently redid it. So um, I'll be getting back to doing some more blogging, that type of thing for the website. But um, I'm, so in, I'm so into talking to you. We haven't talked in years. I didn't even put the banners up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy. Yeah. 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 That's, who, that's who we're talking to. <laughs> so all the people on Facebook are, you know, and watch it in replay go, oh, that's who we're talking to. <laughs> the the suspense show. builds, right? Yeah. Halfway through the show. Then you know who goes on. Well, I, I hadn't even noticed. So I've, I've just been having such a time talking oh. with you. So. <laughs> Getting caught up on things. Cool, cool. So let's talk about ghosts. Yeah. Because I know you know. Yes, I do. <laughs> so why don't you give your story and then we'll go back. Oh, goodness. Well, I had lots of experiences um, ever since I was a child. And um, one of the biggest ones um, – was when we were living in Nashville, Tennessee, and our home had uh, many spirits living in it. Um, we had uh, actually been contacted um, twice by uh, TAPS, the TV show, okay. and um, they were interested in coming out to the, to the house to uh, do a TV show, but they wanted some type of hook, you know, that was scary or something. I said, well, there's nothing scary here. I'm just interested in finding out more about whoever is living here. Um, right. You know, because there's, there's several people. And uh, so that never happened, but they sent um, 
it was a, an affiliate from Clarksville, Tennessee, and they came to the house twice. And we just had some, some great stuff going on. Um, we had a shadow person in the house, orbs, uh, EVPs, um, just about anything you can think of. And um, over the period of a year and a half, I kept a journal for all the things that we could not debunk that occurred um, from sounds like cannons firing, gunshots, crates being drugged, bull whips cracking, uh, things moving around, clocks flying off the wall, bizarre prints inside the glass of my curio cabinet, um, just a whole host of things. And um, absolutely fascinating. They would be in the car at times. Um, <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, I, I was coming home one day from work and um, all of a sudden the car smells like it's cigarette smoke in the car and I don't smoke. And it's like, oh, no, 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 we're, we're not doing this. There's going to be no smoking in the car. Okay. And uh, so I said, you got to stop that. And so they did. And smell went back to normal. We go down the road and all of a sudden it's the smell of cherry pipe tobacco. And it's like, I said, no smoking. <laughs> <laughs> and they finally got the hint after that. And the very next day, my wife came home, stopped at the mailbox. She got back in her car. It smelled like cigarette smoke. So I don't know who that was, but uh, they, they visited the house a number of times. But um, we just had all kinds of interesting phenomena happen um, with objects moving and um, interactions that, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you're, you're crazy. You know, that, that stuff doesn't happen. It does happen. And um, I th think it happens all the time, but a lot of people just aren't open to it or they're, they're too busy. I think some people are more attuned to it um, than others. And um, I find it extremely fascinating. And um, so that area around Nashville was a, was a great place for. So where in Nashville was it? It was outside of Nashville and Fairview, um, okay. not too far from Franklin. Um, yeah. Of course, all kinds of Civil War battles and things. Um, I have a very good friend that lives in Franklin. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. it's a neat little town, isn't it? Yes, it's great. Yeah, yeah I love it. But yeah, yeah that's, said, that's fun. I mean, that 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 whole area of town was, is very haunted. Yeah. I mean, I, I even did a movie downtown, and now it's been torn down, the strip club that we did a movie in. <laughs> that it was tore down, but there was plenty of activity in that strip. Oh, park. oh yeah, yeah. It's yep. all down there, and it's all based on the land, not on the buildings. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we, uh, my wife and I went to Shy's Hill one day, okay. which was the last part of the Battle of Nashville, mm -hmm. and um, the Confederates were at the top of this hill, and Union forces had to go up this hill. I mean, it just had to be absolutely horrendous, and. I got out of the car and it was like a tsunami hit me of just energy. And I mean, it literally threw me back against the car and I just, oh my gosh, this is just unbelievable. And had other experiences like that from Civil War things around there. And um, Have you ever been to Gettysburg? I have. Um, you had the same type of feeling there as you did there? You know, it's interesting. I, I would like to go back and see because we went when our kids were younger and so we were we were busy with them going around the battlefields and stuff. And um, so I, I really didn't notice things, but I definitely would like to go back there because that, that whole area, incredible amounts of energy there that. Yeah. What was really weird. I felt a lot of energy where, where Lincoln was. That was probably Ooh. the coolest I, I, I ever felt was where he up in the field where he gave a speech. Mm -hmm. That was like totally awesome. Oh my. And then we were, we were at this big, you know, we saw the Wisconsin thing and went up. Uh, one of these has this big sta uh, um, place where you climb all the way up. And mm -hmm. we're standing up there and everybody's looking around. And I go, hey, cool. Look, there's a reenactment going. Everyone said, what? There's nobody out there. I go, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I yeah. see it. I'm enjoying it. So you guys <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to have fun. Yeah, it's interesting to be let into that that window and see things like that. Um, we were traveling along the uh, interstate in Pennsylvania a number of years ago, heading up to Vermont. And there was a site 
where back in the 60s, there was this huge crash of vehicles on a foggy morning. And um, all of a sudden, Becky looks over at me and says, are you all right? And I said, I'm seeing that bus crash and I'm hearing the moans and screams of people. The, I see the cars all mangled up. And this went on for about a quarter of a mile and then finally went away. And uh, it's interesting. It, it is nice. I mean, you know, you, you talk about your, one of your characters um, as the archaeologist. I mean, but to me, that's what I feel like. I'm a spirit archaeologist. Yeah. I get to see these buildings, the spaces, what they used to be, you know, a lot more than a lot of people do, you know, so I don't have to spend hours and, and years digging out. I can just see it. So <laughs> I feel like I'm, ha I'm happier because I don't have to do all the work. <laughs> yeah, we, we did have one interesting experience in Gettysburg. Um, we were staying at a bed and breakfast that was built in the 1850s. And um, so there was a like a loft upstairs with a king size bed. And we'd been on the road for a number of days. And so Becky and I thought, oh, it'd be nice. We can stretch out up there. And of course, the kids are, oh, I want to sleep up there. I want to sleep up there. It's like, all right, you guys go sleep up there. We'll sleep in the twin beds downstairs. <laughs> so in the middle of the night, it sounded like somebody fell down the stairs. We jumped up out of bed and, and ran up the stairs and the kids were sound asleep. And so we talked to the, the owner the next day about it. And she said, oh, yeah, we have all kinds of haunts in this house. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, a lot of people would just say, nah, I don't know what that was or, oh, I all right, we can't go there. We can't talk about ghosts. That's kind of scary, you know. That was the wind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Big wind. Yeah, I had Taco Bell. That's what it was. <laughs> but, uh, well, speaking of um, spirits, <laughs> no. <laughs> we, uh, our last uh, nurse job was in, here in North Carolina at a rehab facility. And I think the place was probably about 50 years old or so. You talk about spirits in that place. I mean, and a lot of people, not just me, um, witness things. And uh, Beth, who's on the program listening, she worked there for a while. And uh, we saw a number of things. She is very attuned. And uh, But I saw a person walk out of a wall into a wall, cross the other side of the hall. Things fly off, shadow people, voices. I was in the... Uh, the uh, dementia ward, which is a lockdown ward. And I was doing rounds it's about two o'clock in the morning. I was getting ready to leave a, a room and both of the men in this room were sound asleep. And I hear this voice over my shoulder says, help me. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> um, had an orb fly out of a room, went right through me. I have never been so cold in my entire life. It was- wow. It was interesting. Had a witness for that. And, um, but I mean, it went from room temperature. I felt like it was 20 below zero and strange stuff. No, it's awesome stuff. Yeah. When you really think about it, I mean, that's, I tried, that's what I'm out doing now, trying to change people's views on this to know that your loved ones, you know, they're, they're you're in dementia, you're in this, you're in this last phases. You're trying to depart yourself to know that the loved ones are there to help you. I mean, I bet you had this a lot too, that they would call out people's names that had died years ago. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. and they're like talking to them like they were standing in the room. Right there. Yeah. Well, because they were standing in the room. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I've, I've witnessed that numerous times over the, the years in nursing. And um, yeah, yeah, but I talk, know talk. that. Go ahead. As I say, talked to a lot of people who didn't believe it, um, but no, I've I've seen it firsthand, and absolutely. And to me, for those people that don't believe it, are the ones that are always the first ones to come to me for a reading and go, "How is my parents doing?" Well, they were there. They told you that they were there. They brought their mom in. You heard her. You know. Yeah. So, how much more do you want to know? You know, how much more could I give you than them showing you exactly where they were going and who was there to take them? Yeah. I mean, I remember when we were doing the show back then, you know, the buzz. Um, I remember my dad and grandpa came during one of the episodes of the buzz 
and they walked down the hallways and came into the room when I was on the air. I had to tell them to go away and come back <laughs> and come back at commercial break or at the end of the show. But they came back and told me Grandma was going to die on Thursday. She did. Interesting. And then, and then, and then, but see, I was fine then because I knew Dad, you know, my dad, her, her son that she loved more than anything, and her father, or I mean, her husband, who who was even the same, and they looked the same, and I looked like my dad. And so that's why she always used to call me Henry when she was losing it too, because I looked like that, you know, so she thought I was around, but to know that they were there. And then at the funeral to see my dad, grandma and, and, and her husband and my aunt and her and my grandma's sister and all these people standing in the funeral, you know, in this place with her. Yeah. And then I saw them all leave the church together out the back wall. I was like, I'm happy. She's happy. She's with everybody she loves. There's not one person missing. So how how, how much more can I? Why can I mourn? Because I'm not going to mourn because she's happy. Right. Absolutely. And the only reason if I'm going to mourn that means I'm a selfish idiot because I'm not here. It's not about me. It's about her. She needs to be in the place of love. And she was. Yeah. Absolutely. And then I got beat up on Facebook over because I said I'm so happy for my grandma to have finally passed. And people go, what do you mean? I mean, that she's in a better place. You're an idiot, so stop talking. <laughs> I mean, but, but see, that's what it is. I mean, if we really understood that spirit is with us all the time, our lives would be so much more happy because we know the loved ones are there. I know my dad's standing right there and my spirit guide's standing right there. I know it. They're always with me. And And... I always I feel bad if if I don't feel them during the day. Then I always have to ask them. They go, "Of course we're here." You know what I mean? So they're always yeah. around us. We always have them around us, and we have to we have to rely on them because sometimes we fall down and need that help. Absolutely. So here's the other question, and I've been waiting a long time to ask this. So where's the ghost book? Ah. <laughs> uh. You know, somebody asked me about that one time. Guys in the game finds the gold. <laughs> I've thought about, well, the next Bryson McGann book is called The Orion Project, and it's going to okay. deal with, um, you know, there's space mining that they're talking about happening and mining on the moon, and so NASA and their space program. Right. But delve into the, the UFO aspect some. Which is um, great. That needs to be done, so. Yep. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm, my cogs are starting to turn with that one. Um, and I've had some experiences with those things, too. Um, which I have had two. And I have to admit, because a lot of times I say I know everything. Or people say, oh, you think you know everything. I didn't know anything about aliens, you know. I really was late to the party. You know, I really, <laughs> I really was. I mean, and, but then again, it was my Catholic bring up that we're the most important thing in the universe. And we're not, not even close. You know, there are so many more worlds and so many things. And I found this through my channeling, you know, with, with Sean. I found this through my channeling. He talks to us about aliens all the time. And how are there so many out there? There are like aliens that look like tribbles. But they're, they're just intelligent beings. They're just in a different realms than we are. Yeah. You know, and, and, and for us to think that we're all that, that we're the only ones in the universe, we're idiots. Yeah, that's it, it's we a bit stop that. We've got to stop it. You know, <laughs> and embrace it because there's clues that they've been here. There's clues all over the place. I love all those photos from the old photos from on Facebook you see where ladies walking like this talking. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's 1920. There's right. so much in your ears. We didn't, I don't even think we had portable radios yet then. Uh, no. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. What's she doing? Oh, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. You know, you find stuff like that or the guy in the t shirt. You know, in this picture of all these old people, you know, right. all these shirts and ties, and he's on a t shirt walking around. Yeah, how does that happen? Interesting. Okay, I got a question for you. Dr. Stephen Greer. Well, I have to confess, do I? I don't know Dr. Stephen Greer. So enlighten me, please. Yeah, come on. So, uh, Oh, yes. Watch Ancient Aliens all the time. Okay. Um, so we'll have to find who, who from Shadowhunter said that so we know who Steve, Dr. Stephen Greer is. I'm 
Do you watch Ancient Aliens? Oh, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to think when she, which character that is on the program. It's um, not. They're, I don't think they're related. That was two different people. I oh, okay. So I guess we're back to who is Dr. Stephen Greer, so. He's, a, oh, he's an American ufologist who founded the Center for Study of e Extraterrestrial Intelligence and, and Disclosed Project. Hmm. I've, I've not heard of him. Um, oh, he's in Charlotte, North Carolina. You might as well go visit him. Really? I'm going to have and to write that down book. here. Stephen and Greer, G-R-E-E-R, -E -E yeah. Okay. He's, uh, well, he was in Charlotte. He went to East Tennessee State. Interesting. Yeah, he's done. I guess he's done a lot. If he has the fifth kind, I guess he wrote. I'll have to look and see if he has any books out there. Um, there's so many people in that field. Um, Certainly not familiar with all of them. Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. <clears throat> I think he's part of that whole thing. Oh, okay. So UFOs, yeah, they're around. They're all over the place. We see them all the time. Oh, yes. And that's why it's funny, too, because I saw the other one out there on the web where they had pictures of spaceships five years before they were created. They <laughs> climbed in the sky, you know. Yeah, how does that happen? Well, yeah, that happens because, because they come from back from the future and think that we still had them and we didn't create them until later, so they're yeah. missing time. Got to be like coming back, in, you know, in this, you know, coming back from the seventies and wearing your your pink shirt and your sweater around your neck in the seventies. We didn't do that in the seventies, <laughs> you know. Right. So a little bit of different time. Same thing. They were all right, but they're accurate, but not. Eh. Yeah. Well, there oh, that's was right. incidents um, when I was a kid that my brother and sister tell me about. My mom and dad had gone to the grocery store something on a Friday night. And Western Pennsylvania and Northeastern Ohio back in the 60s was kind of a hot spot for UFOs. Okay. And um, so it was dark out. And all of a sudden, all these multicolored lights just happened to be right above the front yard outside the picture window. Um, There's no police car, no fire trucks, nothing like that. And um, they both remember that this happened. Um, we're kind of scared about it. And I have absolutely no recollection whatsoever of that. Um, so what happened? I don't know. Maybe they put a chip in my head or something at that time. <laughs> um, it was very interesting. And then um, when we were living in Tennessee, I uh, walked out one December night. It was trash day the next day, so I took the can to the curb, and right across the field at treetop level is this huge black triangle. It's probably 150 feet on each side uh, with a red light at each corner, and it was hovering and made this soft whirring sound, and it started moving across the field about as fast as you would walk, and I watched it for 300 yards, and then all of a sudden it just disappeared. But it was darker than the, the ambient night sky. Right. And you couldn't see through the blackness of the um, the, the craft, and um, very fascinating stuff. I saw one here. That's what kind of changed my mind. Well, there's a town southwest of Madison here called Belleville. Or Bell, yeah, Belleville, Wisconsin. And it even has UFO days yet. But it was one of the hot spots of, of the things in Wisconsin. They had the most UFO things happening in Belleville, for, you know, forever. And they still have spaceships in people's yards and stuff. And you always mm -hmm. hear the parades. Now I'm going to have to bring Ecto in there. But um, so we live we live close to an airport. So a lot of stuff I see is airplanes coming in or other devices or those things. I came in. This thing looked like a like a four by four post, but but way bigger. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a four by four post, it was probably twenty four feet long or more. You know, I mean, it was huge. I mean, and it was in the sky, and it was flying. And so, I mean, I didn't see the end, so it could be cigar shape, but it was long like that.
But what the, the thing that got me was the fact that the lights were square and they would pop from here to here. And it wasn't like they flash, you know, like you right. know, the new ones. And they were and they were white or more translucent because they were like really shiny type of things. But the lights were on it and they were going back and forth all the way up and down. So almost like a, a train track because how the lights were moving. But this thing was in the sky, and all of a sudden you look back up, it's gone. Gone. Yep. And, and I and I drove right to the airport. And I didn't see anything land. I I went around all around because you can go around and see the whole airport. Nothing there. So. Yeah, it's. Uh, we have we have F sixteens and we have all the big planes here, so it wasn't one of them. Right, and you can definitely tell between a, an aircraft and. A, uh, an alien craft or whatever you want to call them, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a UFO because I couldn't yeah. even identify. Well, and then we have that the Navy has recently released those videos from 2004 of the uh, Tic Tac um, that the fighter pilots saw, and um, so there's supposed, supposed to be something happening in June of this year. Um, We're here. Yeah, that uh, the Senate is supposed to be being briefed and the public's supposed to know more information about UFOs apparently was put into some congressional bill. So what the public ends up knowing, who knows, I'm sure a lot will be redacted, but um, any, any bit of light on the subject's a great thing. So. But you think about it though, once again, even though we went through COVID and everything, talk about changing the, the whole aspect of our lives to then really knowing that we aren't the only Right. You know, and everybody who always went, eh, yeah, yeah, same thing with ghosts. They're going to have to change their whole view on the universe. Yeah. Because because if there are other races, there are other people. We've met them. We've seen them. We know they're spacecrafts. You know, even if they're, they're drones that only have come over here. You know what I mean? Whatever. We all we all find out that, that this is now our, our, our whole paradigm is going to have to shift. Yeah. Well, I've always thought it's a bit myopic to think that we're the only species in the entire universe um, or this dimension, whether they come from extra dimensions or wherever they come from. Um, right. Um, you know, the, the transition, if it's extra dimensional, how they get back and forth is a fascinating thing. Um, because I've heard people that say I've been able to that some of the ghost information or what I get from spirit comes through like little wormholes through dimensions. And so if I'm a wormhole reader, sweet. That's what I'm going to call myself. <laughs> but however they do it, I want to know how we do it. I want to know how I can sense it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've never, even though I love Star Trek, they, my, my youngest son's middle name is Picard. Love Star Trek. Um, but I, I never believed, and that's why it took me quite a while, I never believed we could go like this to get any place. No, it would just take it would be a, so many hundred generations to get across the universe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, if the universe bent and we could do it, or or the other one I hear that all, I believe that all the dimensions are happening at the same time, past, present, future, everything's happening all at the same time. So then if we can break through that and get to it, we're there already. You're there. That I can believe in. You know what I mean? Yeah. At, yeah, to me, that makes sense. So. Candy writes, Native Americans call them star people. I'd say they have gotten information from them and protect them, protect their older tribes, yeah. The N Native Americans um, are, are very much into that. And, um, you know, it, uh, we were watching a program the other night called uh, The Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch out in Utah. And... Um, I mean, it's a reality show, but it's very interesting. I mean, there's been stuff going on there long before um, this TV show ever came to life. Um, the, the Native Americans there, um, one tribe put a curse on the other, and supposedly these skinwalkers came to life. But uh, there's just so many bizarre things happening on this ranch of all different varieties. Um, right. You know, it's like, you know, just to know all the answers to that would be fascinating. I'm going to have to watch that because the show I've been binging is Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> we 
Were you ready to put on your sparring gloves? We'll uh, we'll do uh, some karate there. So Max on. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a few years since I've put on my gi, but it still fits, by the way. Oh, nice. So you must be geeful. <laughs> <laughs> At times. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of it was fun to get back into the times, but yeah, I've been watching a lot of shows on that, but. The spirituality stuff is, is what's really kind of like been my goal lately. It's trying to get everybody yep. into that again and knowing that spirit is really here to help us. And that, that, and the other thing I would totally believe when everybody's watching, um, if you haven't seen it before, I'm going to tell you that. We all have we all have the gifts. We can all see. We can all hear. We can all do it. The only difference between me and anyone else is practice because I, I believe that I'm, I'm developed exactly the same as as William is, as anybody else who's watching tonight. I don't think I'm any any more special than anybody else. I'm not. I'm just the fact I've been doing this longer than other people. You know, I, I always bring up I always bring up the analogy. It's like playing baseball. Everybody's played baseball one time. I don't think there's one person in the world that hasn't played a form of baseball. You know, kickball, soccer, you know, all that type of stuff, running around bases. Everybody's done it. But that doesn't mean you're in the Hall of Fame. You're not. You know, <laughs> you're not Hank Aaron. But everybody's played baseball. You know what I'm saying? So everybody can play it. And some people are good. I mean, some people have the talent and they go away above. And I understand that. But there are some people that, that get into the major leagues that have practiced their butts off their whole life. And, it, and it's because the talent's the same. It's how you're dedicated to using it or how you believe in it. And I think that's the biggest difference that we have to do right now is believe. So, so that's what people call faith. So what do you do to I'm interviewing you now. So what do you do to practice? <laughs> meditation is the first place to start. Okay. Med meditation gets us into a mindset where we can actually hear spirit so much better. The, I teach classes on it. The first thing I teach everybody is how to um, distinguish their energy and, and know how their body works. Because I can tell anybody who comes on there and says, oh, I know it. If you don't know your own energy and how your heart beats, how your, you know, how your blood flows, how your lungs inflate, how you, you know, how you're anything. If you don't know how that feels, then how do you know what spirit is? Because you don't know your own energy. But once you understand your energy, then you can, anything comes up to you, you know it's different than yours, even other people. Because, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, you and I are very different. I mean, you go to the back to the malls now because you don't have to have masks. You go back to the malls, walk around, you, you know everybody's, you can feel people's energies if they're good. You walk with them. If they're bad, you woo. You know, I mean, and that's just because we know energy. But now imagine if you knew your energy, how much stronger you would be in helping decide what the other people are. We're not we're not meant to be with everybody. So that's kind of the other thing of you walking away from them. Because because I don't believe energy is good or bad. I just believe it's not of our polarity. You know, just like a just like a magnet. Not all energy is supposed to click. That's but if you turn the energy the other way, you know, your man the other way, then it clicks to the negative energies. So that's, you know, so that's why I always tell people to stay positive, stay open, because then positive open stuff comes. It's when, it's when we hide or, we're, or what I call making our own hell. When we hide and make our own hell, that's when all the negative stuff comes to us because we're turned away from what we really should be in this life. And that is love. Interesting. I never thought about it like that before, but uh, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm a little farther along in my teaching than I was last time. <laughs> and I'm glad. I'm glad Spirit has taught, taught me. You know, my classes were given to me through Spirit, through meditation, through understanding. And awesome. um, I mean, you can even tell I'm, I'm not the same person I was before. I'm, I'm much more humble. I, I went through a terrible phase, and I knew it, and I've always said it, and, and I know who I am now, and I know I understand who I am, and I understand what I'm here to do, and I'm here to make sure people understand spirits here and to give us love, and, and that's what this is about. Well, and so are you. Awesome. <clears throat> well, we're all here for a purpose, you know, whether right, we fight. Are. Whether we find that or not is a question. Um, right. Well, it's 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 whether we accept it or not. 
because it always comes. Hmm. Because okay. your your enjoyment of what you got, you know, if you stayed a nurse and not wrote, then you, you would have let your purpose go away. See what I'm saying? And that's why you that's why you love your life so much now is because that's gone. And you're truly doing what you're supposed to be doing. Is your entertainment, your writing, your 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 things that help people. You know, even though you're saying it's it's nonfiction, it helps people. It helped me at the time. And and that's and that's what's so great about it. And that's why we have to remember. Not always do we know what it is, but when it's happening, we have and we're enjoying it, we need to keep enjoying it. Because that's what it is. And that's why your life is so blessed. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you've definitely got to follow that path when it calls. And, uh, Correct. Correct. and, and life presents a lot of obstacles that get in the way and uh, block those things oftentimes. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to be able to have devote more time to doing the writing and enjoying life more. So not that I didn't enjoy the nursing. Um, it, was, it was a good job. Well, it helped uh, a lot of people too. Yeah, I mean, but absolutely. Just with, that was just your next phase to really get you to your knowledge of, of to be help people because you helped through your writings. Thank you, Greg, by the way, for writing that. I appreciate it. <laughs> absolutely. Candy says, many don't believe in spirits. It's considered a no, no religious, no, no religious backgrounds. Well, it is because it is because if you look back at it, it it's, it's a way for humans to be of knowledge. And spirit gives us the knowledge. And for us to know the knowledge, that we're in control. And, and a lot of religions like to be, and even cults, like to always take that information away from you and tell you how to think. And that's the tough part. And that's where, and that's where they don't want you to do it. Because that's what Rome did. And that's why a lot of the Bible changed. Because... Because if you look back in ancient history, you look back, you know, for your archaeologists, you look back farther, they always had a, a shaman or an oracle and a warrior and, and the leader of the tribe. That's how they all ran. Because the oracle would always tell the warrior, this is not the day to fight. Don't do it. Or this is the day to fight. And they would listen and they would do it. But they would always work as a team. But then Rome didn't want anybody else to acknowledge. So they said, it's us only. You listen to us. And if you don't listen to us, you're out. And, and, but that's what happened, and, and that's what still happened. And we're getting it from two parties now. So it's like we need to be we need to be of knowledge of ourselves. Hey, by the way, by the way, mark this on on the thing. Something just walked behind you. Me? Yep. It, it was it was in your doorway above the thing. So when you go back and watch this again, look back there. Oh, and there is no, that's somebody now. Hi. Somebody at the door? Oh, that's Becky. <laughs> that is. We'll She's peeking out from in. the bedroom back there. Hi, Becky. <laughs> you can come say hi. Scotty says hi. <laughs> yeah, you can come over and say hi. Come on the show. So we'll see if that other one is Becky first. Hi. Hello. Uh, <laughs> how you doing? Welcome to the show, everybody. <laughs> Becky back. She says welcome to the show, so she can't hear you at the moment. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Well, hey, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Scotty. <laughs> Everyone, it's Becky back. Yeah, she, uh, Scotty said that he saw something in the back, so we're going to have to see if, if that was you that peeked out that he saw first or if there was a spirit <laughs> here in the house. So. No, it was I. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it's you, not an I. So. Everybody's having a fun time. Everybody's been saying hi. We're just about to wrap up, but everybody's been saying hi. So, it's been a long time since William and I have talked. So. Yes, it, well, it's been too long. So yeah, I'm, we got to stop glad that we've had now. this opportunity. We're gonna stop that from now on. So, all right, why don't we give your books again, where everyone can buy them, especially hardcovers are the ones. With the character Scotty Rourke coming out, you have to buy that one. That's saying. right. So um, paperback or hardback copies, go to my website at www.beck, or excuse me, www.booksbybeck.com.
and you can click on the particular book and just hit the icon. Um, and um, there's also on each book site is a icon for uh, Kindle by Amazon. And uh, for the Polar Meltdown, which is a book that's out now, and we're releasing the Kindle version to help with canines for warriors, just scroll down the Polar Meltdown page to get to the Amazon icon and just click it. And your purchase will help to do a lot of good for a lot of good folks. That's awesome. Well, thank you, William, for coming on. It's been great. It's been Oh, it has been. Thank everybody at home for coming in and watching. Um, go, You can watch this on three places in replay. Of course, on any of my Facebook pages, on Shadow Hunters, Paranormal Investigations and Events um, page, they have it. Um, and also, we put our replays on Psychics Unite um, YouTube page, too. So go on there and like that one, too. So we're all over the place. You'll be able to see the replay here. Um, it should be up by tonight or tomorrow. So everybody come there. So everybody join Ecto-22. She's a great car. Having a lot of fun with her. So like her page and um, come like me. So thank you, everybody, for coming on tonight. We appreciate everybody. Um, we will see everybody next week right here on Shadow Hunters page. So good night, everybody. Thank you, William. Thanks, Scotty. Appreciate it. Okay, good night.